So we brought up consciousness a few times. There's several things I want to kind of disentangle there. So one, you've recently wrote a paper titled Consciousness, Religion, and Gurus, Pitfalls of Psychedelic Medicine. So that's one side of it. You've kind of already mentioned that these terms can be a little bit misused or uh, or used in a variety of ways that uh, they can they can be confusing. But in a specific way, as much as we can be specific about these things, about the actual hard problem of consciousness or understanding what is consciousness, this weird thing that it feels like it feels like something to experience things. Have psychedelics given you some kind of insight on what is consciousness? You've mentioned that it feels like psychedelics allows you to kind of dismantle your sense of self, like step outside of yourself. So that feels like somehow playing with this mechanism of consciousness. And if it is in fact playing with a mechanism of consciousness using just a few chemicals, it feels like we're very much in the neighborhood of being able to maybe understand the actual biological mechanisms of how consciousness can emerge from the brain. So yeah, there's, there's a bunch there. I think I, my preface is that I certainly have opinions that are outside that I can say here are my best speculations as a, as a as just a person and an armchair philosopher and it's that philosophy is certainly not my my training and my expertise um, so I have thoughts there but that that I recognize are completely in the realm of speculation that are like things that I would love to wrap empirical science around but that are you know there's no data and, and getting to the hard problem, like no conceivable way, even though I'm, I'm very open, like I'm hoping that that problem can be cracked. And I do, I, as an armchair philosopher, I do think that is a problem. I don't think it can be dismissed as some people argue. It's not even really a, a problem. I, it, it strikes me that, that explaining just the existence of phenomenal consciousness is a problem. So anyway, I, I very much had keep that divide in mind when I talk about these things, what we, can really say about what we've learned through science, including by psychedelics, versus like what I can speculate on in, in terms of, of you know the nature of reality and consciousness. But in terms of by and large, skeptically, I have to say psychedelics have not really taught us anything about the nature of consciousness. I'm hopeful that they will. They they have been used around certain I don't even know if features is the right term, but things that are called consciousness. So consciousness can refer to not only just phenomenal consciousness, which is like, you know, the the, the source of the hard problem and yep. what it is to be like Nagel's um, description, but um, the sense of self, or so, which can be sort of like the, the experiential self moment to moment, or it can be like the narrative self, the stringing together of stories. So those are things that I think can be, and, and a little bit's been done with with psychedelics regarding that but i i think there's far more potential like but so like one story that unfolded is that psychedelics acu acutely have an effects on the default mode network a certain a pattern of of activation amongst a subset of brain areas that is associated with self-referential processing seems mm -hmm. to be more active more communication between these um uh, areas like uh, the posterior cingulate cortex and the medial prefrontal cortex, for example, being parts of this that are, and, and, and others that are um, tied with sort of thinking about yourself, remembering yourself in the past, projecting yourself into the future. And so that it's an interesting story emerged with, when it was found that when psilocybin is on board, you know, in the person's system, that there's a de there's less communication amongst these these areas. So with resting state fMRI imaging that there's there's less synchronization or presumably communication between these areas. And so I think it was has been overstated in terms of, ah, oh, we see this is like, this is the dissolving of the ego. This is it. The story made a whole lot of sense, but there's several, I think that story is really being challenged. Like one, we see increasing number of drugs that are, that, that, decouple that network, including ones like that 
aren't psychedelic. So this may just be a property, frankly, of being like, you know, screwed up, you know, like, mm -hmm. you, you know, being out of your head, being like, like, you know. So anytime out. you mess with a perception system, maybe it screws up some, some, uh, just the, uh, our ability to just function in the, the holistically like we do in order, yeah, yeah, for the brain to perceive stuff, to be able to map it to memory, to connect things together, the, the, the whole recur mechanism that, that could just be messed with. with right. Drugs. And it couldn't, I'm speculating, it could be tied to more if you had to download in the language, everyday language, like not feeling like yourself. Like, right. so whether that be like really drunk or really hopped up on amphetamine or, you know, on, like we found it like decoupling of the default mode network on Salvinor and A, which is a smokable psychedelic, which is a, a non-classic psychedelic, but another one where like DMT, where people are often talking to entities and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. That was a really fun study to run. But nonetheless, most people say it's not a classic psychedelic and, and doesn't have some, so, some of those phenomenal features that people report from classic psychedelics and not sort of the clear sort of ego loss type, not, at least not in the way that people report it with classic psychedelics. So you get it with all these different drugs. And so, mm -hmm. and then you also see just broad, broad changes in network activity with other networks. And so I think that story took off a little too soon, although, yes. so I think in, in the story that the DMN, the default mode network relating to the self, and I know some neuroscientists, it drives them crazy if you say that e it's the ego, and that's yeah. like, e e but self-referential processing, if you go that far, like that was already known before psychedelics. Psychedelics didn't really contribute to that, the idea that this type of of, of net brain network activity was related to a sense of self. Mm -hmm. But it is absolutely striking that psychedelics that people report with pretty high reliability, these unity experiences that where people subjectively, like like they report losing or again, like the boundaries of the, however you want to say it, like, mm -hmm. like these these unity experiences, I think we can do a lot with that in terms of figuring out the the nature of the, the sense of self. Now, I don't think that's the same as the hard problem or or the existence of phenomenal consciousness because you can build an AI system and you correct me if I'm wrong that like will pass a Turing test in terms of demonstrating the qualities of like uh, a sense of self. It will talk as if there's a self and there's probably a certain like algorithm or whatever, like computational, like, you know, scaling up of computations that results in somehow, and I think this is the argument with with humans, with some have speculated this, why do we have this illusion of, of the self that's that's evolved that, and we might find this with AI that like, it works, you know, having mm -hmm. a sense of self or, or, and that's stated wrong, incorrectly, like acting as if there is a, an agent at play and behaviorally acting like, you know, there is a there is a self that might kind of work, and so you can program a computer or a robot um, to basically demonstrate have an algorithm like that and demonstrate that type of behavior. And I think that's completely silent on whether there's an actual experience inside yeah. there. I've been um, struggling to find the right words and how I feel about that whole thing, but. Uh... Because I've I've said it poorly before. I've before said that there's no difference between the appearance and the actual existence of consciousness or intelligence or any of that. What I really mean is the the more the appearance starts to be look like the thing, the more there's this area where it's like I don't think I don't I, our whole idea of what is real and what is just an illusion is um, not the right way to think about it. So the whole idea is like, if you create a system that looks like it's having fun, the more it's realistically able to portray itself as having fun, like there's a certain gray area at which it's, the system is having fun. Uh, and same with intelligence, same with consciousness. And we humans wanna, simplify like it feels like the way we simplify the existence and the illusion of something uh, is is uh, missing the whole mm -hmm. truth of the nature of reality which we're not yet able to understand like it's the one percent we only understand one percent currently so we don't have the right uh 
physics to talk about things with, don't have the right science to talk about things. But to me, like the uh, uh, faking it and actually it being true is um, the the difference is much smaller than what humans would like to imagine. That's my yeah. intuition. But the philosophers hate that because, and uh, guess what? It's philosophers. What have you actually built? <laughs> Uh, the, so like to, to me is that's the difference between philosophy and engineering. It, it feels like if we push the creation, the engineering, like fake it until you make it all the way, which is like fake consciousness until you realize, holy crap, this thing is conscious. Fake intelligence until you realize, holy crap, this is intelligence. And from the, the my curiosity with psychedelics and just ne neurobiology, neuroscience is like, it feels I'm, I, I love the armchair. I love sitting in that armchair because it feels like at a certain point, you're going to think about this problem and there's going to be an aha moment. Like that's what the armchair does. Sometimes science prevents you from really thinking, Right. wait, like it's really simple. There's something really simple. Like there's some, there could be some dance of chemicals that we're totally unaware of, not from not from a, aspects of like which chemicals to combine with which biological architectures, but more like we were thinking of it completely wrong. That uh, just, just out of the blue, like maybe the human mind is just like a radio that tunes into some other medium where consciousness actually exists, mm -hmm. like those. Uh, weird sort of hypothetically, like maybe we're just thinking about the human mind totally wrong. Maybe there's no such thing as individual intelligence. Maybe it is all collective intelligence between humans. Like maybe the intelligence is possessed in the communication of language between minds. And then in, in fact, consciousness is a property of that language uh, versus a property of the individual minds. And somehow the neurotransmitters will be able to connect to that. So uh, then, then AI systems can join that common collective intelligence, that common language. You know, like just thinking completely outside of the box. I just said a bunch of crazy things. I don't know, but, but thinking outside the box uh, and there's something about subtle manipulation of the chemicals of the brain, which feels like the best or one of the great chances of the scientific process leading us to an actual understanding of the hard problem. 